So today I've come down to Newport Harbour, not too far from where I live, about 10 miles, and I've bought out the Olympus OM20, and inside I've got a roll of um, Agfa Copex Rapid Film, which is a slow speed film, it's a 50 speed ISO film, and apparently it was, um, it was used back in the day as microfilm. So I don't really know too much about the history of it, um, but apparently it was used as microfilm. And if you know anything about microfilm, that stuff's pretty high resolution uh, film. You're meant to be developing this in Spur Developer, but I've been trying it out in Rodno, and I developed a role yesterday in Rodno, and I was so surprised at how sharp this film came out. So uh, I'm down at Newport Harbour, I'm gonna take a few pickies down here and uh, see how we get on. I'm just gonna be looking for some interesting stuff, you know, like this old wall behind me, and anything that I can find um, that'll get a bit of sharpness into my images. So I'll show you what I'm doing. So this film, Agfa Copex Rapid, is a low speed panchromatic black and white film with a nominal sensitivity of 50 ISO. Excellent resolution, very fine grain, and excellent accutant are characteristics of Copex Rapid. So when this film is developed in spur modular UR, parts A and B, the sharpness, fine grain, exposure, latitude, tonal values, and speed utilization are all retained. I did have a look online to see if I could get any spur developer, but it doesn't seem to be very popular in the UK. And across the world, it seems to be quite expensive. However, it does seem to last a long time and the development dilutions are very minimal. And from what I've read, it's a low contrast developer because this film being a microfilm is quite heavy on the contrast, especially when you're developing it in normal black and white film developers such as Rodnol. So that was enough of Newport Harbour. I got a little bit bored to be honest with you. Um, so I went home, I had a little munch to eat, and then I've come out now. It's uh, a few hours later, it's kind of seven o'clock in the evening, so the sun's going down behind me, and I'm over at Yarmouth Harbour, which is about half hour or so uh, from where I live. But you can see around me there's loads of boats and loads of opportunity, so hopefully I can bang out the rest of this roll um, around here, around some of these boats. Uh, some nice big ass clouds up there you can see behind me and see what we can get around here. And <laughs> I ain't got a clue what to take photograph of. Uh, I'll find something. Ah, I found something, I'm going to start on this little boat behind me. Look at the old steering wheel, this old speedboat. I don't know when the last time that went out, but it don't look too clever, does it? Let's get some picks in. Now, the only drawback at the moment is this is a 50 speed film. So, you know, the sun's going down. I'm going to be hitting longer exposures than I was earlier on. I was doing, I think, 1 25th of a second earlier on at like F11, F8. And I want to kind of keep those that aperture smaller so I can get bags of detail in and keep sharpness going. But I haven't got a cable release. So if I start doing some metering and I'm going to start hitting the 30ths or the 15ths of a second, I'm going to have to be very bloody careful when I take the shot um, because obviously then that's going to give me an unsharp image. I didn't forgot my cable release, but hey oh, shit happens, doesn't it? All right, I'm on a tripod. Not the best tripod in the world, but keeps the camera steady. 15th of a second. Now one thing I don't do a lot of on my channel is camera reviews. I've done a couple, Nikon F90X and also the Olympus OM10. And when I did the Olympus OM10 review, I'll put a link up there for you guys if you're interested in that. Um, that camera was kindly sent to me to try out. And I did a review on it. I've never used the Olympus system before, but I was so impressed. Um, I went out and bought, after I sent the camera back to the guy who lent it to me, I went out and got the OM20. And what appealed to me with the OM20 is that it's got its own um, shutter speed selector, as opposed to the OM10, which is a, a optional extra. And that's what I liked about the OM20. Pretty much the same camera, 
um, but a fantastic bit of kit. The sun's coming right out now. Um, fantastic bit of kit, and I use it quite a lot. It's nice and small. It's a lot smaller than my other 35mm SLR. So if there's any newbies out there looking to get into film photography, have a look at the Olympus system. There's a whole range of lenses. I've only got this 50mm um, for my Olympus OM20. Uh, I've got no other lenses to put on it, but it is a fantastic bit of kit and very reliable as well. So I definitely recommend this camera to anyone that's getting into film photography, you know. So now I'm in trouble. All the clouds gone. The sun's another hour from going down and it's bloody bright. So everything over there is just going to be so contrasty, uh, especially with the developer I'm using. I believe that that spur developer is a low contrast developer. So with me using the rod now, even though I'm going to be diluting it one part to 100, uh, I've still got a feeling with that sun beating off over there like it is, it's going to um, give me some real, you know, it'd be hard to recover the shadows and get the highlights in at the same time. So I could go one part to 200 with rod mold, but then I'm, I have to start experimenting again. So, shit. Um, I'm going to take a shot anyway, just for jolly, and see if I'm right about the contrast of this film. May as well, eh? Because I'm here just to play with it and experiment with it. So uh, let's shoot a contrasty scene, see what happens. So I've just shot this scene here. So um, I've decided to skip that, it's just too bright, it's way too bright for me to do any photographs there um, and even when the sun does go down there's no point, I haven't got a cable release. So I'm going to go into town, a uh, little old quaint town and take some photographs there, see what I can come up with, a little bit more shade over there as well. You can see how powerful the sun is, look at the uh, my shadow, like a stretch man, Mr Stretch. <laughs> Longest legs in the world. This looks interesting, these little tiny alleys. I'm gonna take a few shots down here, it's in the shade, so um, let's see how we get on with down here. And that's another thing, because I'm restricted with the tripod, so I can't, you know, because it's only a slow speed film at 50, I'm restricted with the tripod, so everything I do has got to be on a tripod, it's just taking longer. If I was handheld, I'd be able to get different positions and get some more creative angles, but, you know, it is what it is, isn't it? That's why we try these things out. I've come all the way down here, I've only taken about 10 shots. <laughs> Because of the sun is so bright and you know if it was overcast I could have got a lot more um, around those boats and stuff but I just know that the sun was so powerful um, creating contra uh, creating lots of dark shadows it's just been a bit a bit of a nightmare not really what I want so I'm gonna give up go home develop the film see what I can do with it Okay, so now the proof is going to be in the pudding. I'm in the dark room with the negatives. I'm going to see if I can make some uh, prints. I've got some 5x7 Kentmere paper. Nice and cheap. I'm not going to waste any big paper on this stuff. I uh, just want to see how, how they come out in the dark room under the chemicals and light, you know. Uh, the images that I show you on my videos are scanned with a cheap little Kemro scanner. And I don't scan, you know, to make prints. So I only scan just to show you guys. George, shut it. <laughs> Bloody dog. Uh, yeah, so I just used that camera scanner just to show you guys uh, on the video more of the images that I've taken. But uh, yeah, the real stuff goes on in here in the darkroom. So let's get on with making some prints. I'll show you the negatives. So these are my negatives on the light box. These are the first ones I was taking up at Newport. You can see, look at this, um, the light leaking into the sprocket holes here. It does sound on the film itself only to be opened in subdued light. Um, and for the video, I'll put it... <laughs> Under, under light for you guys to see the camera and me loading it. But uh, yeah, this, these are the first ones I was taking. Not too bad, a little bit punchy, but then, oh boy, check them bad boys out. Look at the contrast on them. It's almost like black and white cartoons, you know, like comic books. 
Um, but we're in the dark room. Let's see if we can make some prints. Oh my God, I can't see any grain at all to focus on. It, it is so fine. Um, I'll have to go to one of my other focuses, which is more of a visual inspector. Put my glasses on. I'm having right fun and games in here. I've just printed that bookshop um, print. I've done quite a few at the moment. I've been up and down with the um, contrast filters like nobody's business. Raising the head of being larger to see um, what a close up, you know, blowing one up looks like. Uh, using the same paper, but I'm just raising the head of being larger and just probably go for the window pane. See how sharp this film is uh, when blowing up in the dark room. So this is a 5x7 print of the blow up. You'll just start seeing the image coming through in a minute. I uh, just want to see how the film holds up with the resolution and the sharpness when blown up to probably around about 16 by 12 um, if I was to print this full size. But of course we're only putting a 5x7 paper in on a, on a small section of the overall image. So that was trying out the Agfa Copex Rapid Film, uh, the microfilm there, and that's the second roll that I've shot. I've got it sent to me by Mr. Casey Face out in LA. Cheers, mate, for that. Um, and you know, I could have got the Spur developer, but it's quite expensive. I couldn't really find it in the UK, but it was quite expensive to get, and I probably wouldn't use Spur on any of my other films. Let us know in the comments if you use Spur and what it's like. But uh, you know, for the cost, I'd rather get some more paper and chemicals or film um, for my channel. So um, I'll just show you some of the prints that I came back with after developing it in Rodnoll. Um, this was the, the bookstore print. They came out all right. Some of them were a nightmare to work with. You know, I, I had test strips coming out of my ears in the dark room. Not literally, but you know what I'm saying. Um, so this was one of the, um, I quite like this one. This was out over in the shade there when I walked up in the alley. And then I blew it up. It's quite sharp. And then I blew it up to see what it would look like blown up. And it still retains sharpness. It hasn't really lost any, any detail. Just slightly, a little tiny bit more more grain in the white area, but you know, it's hardly noticeable. You'll have to really look at it under a magnifying glass um, to see it. A couple more prints, or a few more prints that I made. Um, that was the speedboat there. Trouble um, trying to get the highlights right. As you can see on the barrels there, I've got the whites um, totally going all over the place there. So I ended up playing with contrast filters and went down to contrast zero filter just to build up the highlights and the blacks as well. But, um, you know, quite tricky to work with on these negatives where anyway in the dark room, that's a barrel there. You can see that's quite muddy. So I had to change my contrast filters over again. And this time managed to get the barrel working um, and also get some detail in the blacks as well. So some of them came out all right. Others didn't come out so well, like this one here in the, in the shadow areas. That one there was a nightmare. Um, you know, but all the other tones around the print are okay. Um, that was the speedboat there. That was with a two and a half grade filter, completely killed that one. And that was the hotel sign as well that I liked, um, which I think was a, was a, a grade one filter. I ended up with that one, but I ended up doing quite a few tests. Uh, prints to try and you know see what, where these prints were going to go in the dark room. It was quite tricky, like I said. But above all, these strange films are there for us to play with and test out. If you like them, you like them. If you don't, you don't. But at least you know if you if you grab hold of some of these films, microfilms, or or the aerial footage films that are out there, and other strange rebranded films, just get hold of them and have a go and try. You know, you might you might like them, and it might suit your style of photography. I don't know where that that microfilm will fit in with my style, but I certainly do like the contrast and the punchiness of it. I'd like to try a portrait with it at some point, but if I do, I'd probably, if I do get that um, film again, I'd probably invest in the spur development just out of interest to see how it works. If any of you guys have used that film, especially with the spur developer, let us know in the comments, or if you've even used spur developer, the one that I'm talking about uh, for this film, let us know if you do and what you use it for. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Thanks to all the guys that support me on Patreon that enable me to get in the dark room and play around as much as I do. Really do appreciate your support. And I'll catch you next time.